So uh, I think they might have rolled a little bit of um, a few clipping in. Watch this, watch the pitch here. Mm. And uh, actually, guys, you have a look at him. A little glance down towards the pitch there. Lara at the moment just having a little uh, little look there as well. Lara's got to be a little careful of that off cutter. He likes to leave the ball outside off stump, and he doesn't want one to nip back and keep low. Here we are. On to the front foot. He doesn't take long, does he? That's the end of the over. 44 for two. Power straight behind it. Well, we'll have another ball after that one. Uh, he's just hes just not putting his fingers behind it. Whether he's trying to bowl all cutters, which I doubt, and with a new ball, if I was Nathan Bracken at the other end, I used to, I used to bowl with a fellow that was called Jeff Timmick that was a swing bowler and a cutter. He used to bowl cutters. And he used to try and bowl cutters with a brand new ball in the first two overs. I threatened to choke him if he did that. Because you wrecked to the drive shot. you around the bend, isn't it? What about that? What about that Lenny Pascoe? Did he do, do the same, or was he upright? No, he just tested the middle of the pitch out over ball. That's a no ball, and that's gone for four. <laughs> yes, there's there's nothing worse. You're trying to keep the ball nice and shiny, and uh, it comes back with a couple of chunks out of it. Well, that one might have a chunk out of it. That's gone like a bullet past uh, I think it's Clark at point there that's a huge no ball isn't it and to make matters worse it doesn't end there because it ends up crashing into the fence so it's a fiver and an extra delivery to the back into the gap again this is um, an aspect of Laura bat Laura's batting that uh, we'll see more and more of if he stays out there this ability to hit the ball into the gaps 17 off the over 61 for two a length got the ball to move there's certainly a lot of work to do the fact the West Indies have lost two wickets that goes against them but they need a big inning from Lara certainly Chris Gale because he's been there since the inception 41 deliveries for his 20 he need not go crashing after the bowling now he needs to bat the distance it's a different sort of a role for Chris Gale here if he can bat the 50 overs I don't see the West Indies losing beautiful no other word can describe this straight drive from Brian Lara Oh, absolutely right. If you're looking for some elegance, for beauty, have a look at this. Beautiful. Look at the way the blade went through the line of the delivery. Perfect balance. Lovely. Middle of the bat. Nobody moved. You can frame that one. Fourteen overs gone, sixty-six for two. Lara is on ten of seven. Chris Gale forty or forty-eight. Have a look at the highlights of the first fifteen overs, and there were a few first spells so far. Nathan Bracken, I thought, bowled quite usefully, picking up the wicket of Ramner Sawan, and Brett Lee fortuitously picked up the wicket of Shifnarain Chandapal. Now, the power play has been delayed. The final power play has not been taken of the innings in the short term he brings on Shane Watson and, and there's so many options for Mike Hussey today from his bowling point of view and that gives him great variety and great scope and opportunity really Watson picked up four wickets in the first match against the West Indies and he was man of the match in the second match against India he's I wonder what will happen at the other end, the end from which Stuart Clark has been bowling from the football field end. Just wonder if the captain, Hussey, will look to take pace off the ball and maybe exploit the dry conditions by getting one of his slower bowlers on. Colin is in the team. 
but he's also got this man andrew simons who just fielded the ball Simons can operate in a couple of modes. He can bowl his medium pace, or he can choose to bowl in these conditions, his off spin. Oops, there we go. So I'd have been told, though, he's trying to send a message to the captain. Certainly having to... Certainly would want to remove the pace from the ball. Get the slower options in very quickly now for Gale. That could have been close. Brand Lara had won across. It's going to come back for the second. That's going to be tight. Is it? Is it tight? Well, some of the Australians feel that it's very, very close. Let's take a look. No. Just from the naked eye, it looked very close. We'll get a view from the other side, which should give us a more conclusive view. Oh. Well, that is as tight as you can get. Indeed. Now, the bay has got to be off completely. Now, there's one frame before when the wicket is disturbed, but the bail doesn't seem to be off. That is a tough one to give. I don't envy the third umpire, but that kind of doubt, it may just be in the batsman's favor. The wicket is disturbed, the bat is on the line, but the bail has to be off, as far as I understand it. Give a nut out. That's when you earn your money as a, third, a television umpire for me, because I don't think it could be much tighter. I think Mark Benson is the television umpire. He can happily collect a salary. Well, the right decision in the end, Bish. But Brian Lara, well, it couldn't be tighter than that. There's really no need to take such liberties. Now, if that was a direct hit, it was gone. That's all they need to keep doing. 16 overs gone, 2 for 96. He's had a wonderful day, Mike Hussey. First day as captain of Australia. And he crowned it with a phenomenal 100. But now it's a turn of the West Indies to see if they can emulate it in some way. Over. Partnership of 52 of just 30 deliveries. 177 to win from 34 overs. And the rate is, the asking rate is below the original rate at the start of the innings. Required now is 5.21. Andrew Simons into the attack. I want to ask you a question about that, Aaron Lau. You're saying that there isn't a need to, to do anything out of the ordinary at this stage is it easier as a batsman when when your runs are flowing and the adrenaline is pumping to think logically we well, certainly have to if you want to reach more victories than losses well 44 for two they've come out firing they've got to 52 of just 31 deliveries now Really, it requires you to keep a control of that adrenaline. Just keep nudging the singles. Talk to each other. Even if you get three or four singles and over, just let the next ten overs go. Keep wickets in hand. Just bat the opposition out of the frame. Australians wouldn't mind giving them another three or four boundaries, but if they get one of these two, they feel that they would have an opening. They've done well to remove some of the pace of the ball. He's bowling at around 120. And he's now called Brad Haddon up. up. 
And certainly just after we've come out of a game Vice where you Roy. lost nine wickets for 29. He was off spin. Nice shot. Nice shot. I would think that's one of the more difficult shots to play in the game. That on drive. This is Brian Lara at his best. You've got to watch and admire. Beautifully done. We saw a phenomenal straight drive and look at this. Head over the ball, delayed it just enough to keep it on the ground. Beautiful. Yes, it's a call for two, but I don't think you want to take on Brett Lee's arm again, yes, given the close proximity. Early on, 17 overs gone, 103 for two. Well, uh, the red line has just taken off. It's gone way ahead of the asking rate. They brought it down to 5.15. Watson. What a stunning partnership, 59 of 37. Suddenly rested the initiative from the opposition after 44 for two. Two big hits for six. Some wonderful boundaries there, the on drive, the straight drive, two that immediately come to mind. I think the Aussies really need to get in the slow bowling option, test out the conditions. Maybe the ball will turn a bit. 20 of 18 deliveries for Lara. They've got to try it out now. Two left-handers batting. They've got an off-spinning option. You've got two off-spinning options. And then you've got Michael Clark as well, who can... And that's the kindest way I can put it. <laughs> if you're asking me, Bish, <laughs> I probably didn't have any adrenaline flowing through me. <laughs> it was more logic than adrenaline for me. No, no, no. 18 overs gone, 105 for two. Simon's as an option. Now that they haven't taken the second power play or the third power play, they really need to try their spinner out very quickly. Whoa! Yes, Roy. You don't want him to be bowling when you have a power play situation on hand. So you have that option. You need to try him out now. There it is. The most phenomenal partnership there, Hussey and Haddon. They were a 104 for five. They went on to score. One six seven, which is a new world. Nineteen overs gone. One 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 for two. It's been a beautiful day here in Kuala Lumpur. The rain has stayed away up to this point. Out in the country box, Danny Morrison is with Lakshman Shiva Ramakrishna. Thanks, Vish.
been a very entertaining partnership between Gail and Lara. Probably this is the first false shot that Lara has played. Closing the face of the bat a little too early, getting the leading edge. Been a very good half century from Chris, Chris Gale. 50 or 56 balls. Took a little bit of time to get in, but once he got in, there was no stopping Gale. Most of his runs coming on the offside. A few dangerous strikes straight down the ground. Had Bola in a spot about that at times. Looking to take the game away from the Australians, Chris Gale. This has become a rarity, ball going past the bat. Time to say good evening to Danny Morrison. Now, good seam position. But I've just been sitting back, Shivan, watching proceedings. And, I uh, don't oh know, just maybe need a few more change-ups. Just a subtle change of pace. So the... Uh, possible advantage for the Australians winning the toss batting first and then this track may just start to get a little bit more tired just that little bit lower and you see where Lara gets right across doesn't he right across to off stump he looks to work the bowlers into the league side it's favorite area or one of them a bit of inside edge that's what saved him it's 113 for two. Sixty-nine, the partnership of just fifty-four deliveries between Gail and Lara. They need a wicket. The trailer to get back into the game. And spin option is not a bad one at this stage. I hear you, Shiv. The other beauty is that uh, cricket lovers around the globe will appreciate that uh, Andrew Simons has the ability to bowl his off spinners. At the moment, operating with his own little bit of medium pace with Haddon standing up. But, uh, good subtle changes. At the moment, operating with his uh, mediums. Going for two, taking it on. And Lara, quick again. That's the tricky part, isn't it? When you have a frontline regular spinner playing in the 11, Dan Cullen. Andrew Simons is not a regular spinner, he's a part timer. You'd want to bring your regular spin around first. Got to do something to pick up a wicket and break this. But they would have learned a lesson, West Indies, in the first match. There was a dramatic collapse. And looking totally in control. Lost the last nine wickets for 29 runs. And it's important for these two batsmen. Lara and Gail were looking very good. Very comfortable out in the center to catch. Gail Tendolka. So yeah, one less match in terms of well. Clark. <laughs> Strike rate. Look at those 92, 90, pretty much 93 for Sachin. 
Clark. I don't know about you, Shiv. I'd really like to see him possibly having a go at opening the batting for Australia. It's a compliment of just so much depth in the middle order for the Aussies. I don't know. May get a go at that hope in the near future. Just still runs of the last over from Watson. It's 190. Signal leg buys as he beat in the bat. Closing the face of the bat a little too early was Gale. Yes, Dan. Young man up against one of the all-time greats who enjoys playing spin bowling. That's a good delivery. But the problem, though, bowling from that angle, have to pitch outside leg stump, so LBW is out of the way. There's a bit of bounce as well. That should encourage the spinner. It's a good start, this from Cullen. Just a dot ball, a leg by, now three dot balls. Good challenge. Once one, we'll get it, Lara, and also keep strike. Two runs of the over, it's 121 for two. Stuart Clark into the attack, change events. Very, very expensive in his first spell. Well, he'll just be feeling a little tense, Stuart Clark. Three overs for 44. And uh, Gale took a liking to Clark. Oof, just uh, a little width. Uh, you can disappear. Calypso stuff from Gale at its best. A lot better. This particular delivery from Stuart Clark. He's got to redeem himself. First over. Let's take a look. Pitch map of Dan Cullen. Bowling to the left handers, getting the ball to turn. Had to pitch most of his deliveries outside the line of leg stump. No chance of getting any leg before decisions bowling from that angle. Maybe the change of angle bowling round might help against the off spinner. Lara's batting on 30. Really useful knock against the Indians. Played some attacking shots and looks very good from the moment he walked into bat today. And there is a man in the deep. Speaking about Lara, got 27 out of 30 deliveries against India, dominating the Indian bowlers. He's looking a lot more composed. He's got his timing right. We'll realize the importance as a, one of the best players the world has ever seen to see his side through. Required run rate, 5.7. Well balled. Had to adjust the length at the last moment, seeing Brian Lara come out of the crease. Flight this one. How's that last delivery? 89 Ks. Some bowling around those uh, early mid 90s. Signal wide. Rightly so. Yeah, Shiv, you, you think he needs a good idea to uh, come around, to have a crack, the youngster, left-handers? Particularly the Lara, you reckon? Oh, 
on a pitch where the ball is turning, you want to cut down on the angle. Again, he's looking to bowl a line outside the leg stump because the ball turning. If he comes around the stump, probably get the ball to drift into the left-hander. Then turn away. Oh. Just wide of the man at mid-wicket. Brian Lara's intentions were clear. Great fielding. He wants to take the attack to Dan Cullen. Always a chance he could hold out, but just a little lucky. Yeah, good piece of bowling again from young Cullen. Sticking to his guns. He's loot happening. Close the face, Lara. Oh, and lucky to get away with that. Simon Kadich will flick back. Smart work. Good effort out in the deep. I think that looks all right. Just uh, confirming this. Simon Kadich around the boundary. Little flick. Super effort. Oh. Well played in the end. I'd have to say he was taking a lot of chances, Brian Lara. But the genius in Lara comes out in the end, plays it late. It was a quicker delivery ball at 98 Ks. Gave the opportunity for Lara to play with the pace and pick himself a boundary. Jeez, he's a long way down there. But he's backing himself and that eye of his. And it is a good eye too. Oh! Deft touch. Beautiful. Just allowed the ball to come on and picks up another boundary. Another good over for the West Indies. He's unsettling the off-spinner by making so many movements. But in the end, as the bowler is about to deliver, he's in a normal batting position. Oh! No ball. Really is a crime for a spinner to be overstepping. Maybe just a sign there, just a little bit rattled young Cullen. Because uh, Lara, vast amount of movement. Pre-delivery. 13 off this over, so far. Good shot, just for the single. Nathan Bracken in the deep. 5.45. Watching on Fox Sports. The West Indians are going along nicely. 98. Exquisite. Pure magic from the Blade of Lara. Brings up the 100 partnership. A bit like Hussey and Haddon. 100 partnership up. This is Gail and Lara. And Brian Lara. And smoke this through the covers. Stuart Clark, roll of the eyes. What do you do against that lot? in the air but in the gap as well Hayden's got a lot of work does well Lara picks up two nine of the over it's 148 for two well oh, as well very determined to make a contribution to this young uh, West Indian side. So! Or Gail. Go! I think it's time that they brought back Brett Lee, the main strike bowler, try and disturb things a bit. Across the line and another four. And that'll go all the way to the boundary as well. This is a nice fast outfield. And it's exactly the way it should be. That's well played. 
Well, this man is treating us to some fabulous action. Not only does he play his shots, but very deliberately, every shot is played into the gap. It's not only by, <laughs> by some quirk of fate that they reach the gaps. He closes the face of the bat, he opens the face of the bat, he knows exactly what he's doing. Is the example of opening the face of the bat, just running it down to third man. Beautiful. Not too many backward of square on the onside. Oh dear, now that's not a very good shot. That's the first really loose shot, and uh, that's the sort of, uh, I suppose, that's the sort of night that he's had, isn't it? He gets one in the right place, and uh, a very loose. Almost unnecessary shot from Lara, having got himself into this situation. Well, that's exactly what maybe Hussey was hoping to happen. Entice Lara into going over the top. There's no real need for this. They've already got, they are already got eight before this fortuitous boundary. But that was close. Almost got sucked into it. Oh, well played. Well, it uh, misses by Skerik, and then he blasts him down the ground for four. This will be one of the most frustrating evenings that uh, Clark has ever experienced on a cricket field. And extreme brilliance. Just take a look at that footwork. Preempted Clark, used his feet, got to the pitch of it, and then just slammed it. He's thinking while his bat is coming down, that's the benefit of having that back lift. He can keep thinking while the back lift is coming down. That's his great strength, Brian Lara. No, no. The record, I want to tell you, in one day internationals for runs conceded by a bowler in 10 overs is 113. Michael Lewis. Um, achieved that uh, well, you can't call it a distinction I suppose but he'll be remembered for it at the moment the clock is on target to uh, take over and no wicket for 80 of uh, 6.4 in the air no ball and dropped so it wouldn't have mattered anyhow but boy did it go like a rocket The ball burst through Cullen's hands. Well, that's been a problem for Stuart Clark as well. I mean, the number of no balls that he's bowled, but that should have been held. Maybe it got to him a lot quicker than he expected. He's been all over the place. That's to the left-handers, Clark to left-handers, and they've really taken him apart. There was an over that he went for 21. Also, that's probably his third over, and then... So 185 for two, 
and uh, the West Indies going beautifully here. Lara's on 66 of 61. Gail has had a wonderful time in this tournament on 70. So 185 for two. Take a look at that. Seven overs, 87. Stuart Clark has really taken up pounding. Bracken, very frugal. So is Brett Lee. Those are the two wicket takers. And then Watson, four overs, none for 14. And then Simons and Cullen have bowled six. They need four out of those two as well. This is the over before drinks that went for 23. Bit of luck there for Lara, but then that fabulous shot using his feet. And there was that no ball, wasn't taken. Just losing the line a bit. Overstepping as well, wides, no balls, couldn't get that last ball away. This two was a no ball. Finally, eventually got done with the over, but had conceded 23. Well, this is part of the game as well. You've got to take the highs with the lows. That's why this game is such a leveler. But someone needs to do something for Australia here. Clark, uh, seven overs for 87. That's an average of 12.43 runs and over. Lee, six overs, no wickets, one for 21. This has been a tremendous performance by the West Indies. They've played so well. Not just in this uh, match, their, their top order have performed really well in this tournament. Just for the benefit of all of you sitting at home in India who um, are very keen to know what happens if India ends up on equal points with um, the West Indies, which is a, a distinct possibility. The team with the most number of wins goes through. Well, they'll be equal if, uh, if they happen to be up against the West Indies. If still, uh, they don't necessarily um, have to be equal, but uh, I'll just run through the I'll just run through the sequence of events that uh, will decide who goes through. The team with the most number of wins, if still equal to the end. Often you hear the old saying that in the West Indies camp, certainly I'm not sure if it happens in the other camps is that you don't leave it for anyone else to do. You see it through the end when you're in. Brian Lara knows that more than most. Really gets up for a match against Australia. And so does Jeff Thompson. Well, unfortunately, I've been around uh, commentating on a few games that Brian Lara has won against Australia. He has that habit. But he's going to have to do it here. I, I believe in that because I just I don't think that West Indies batting line convinces me the, the ones to come. I just think it uh, gets a little bit nervous. Friend, the next. You'll be hoping they will grow out of that. What a pitch outside leg stump. Got across a long way, and I think that's what sort of accentuated the situation just have a little look at this pitches outside uh, it's pretty well hitting the line but pitched way outside that's brought up the much the best oh one of the best australian bowlers on show tonight 5.5 overs for 19 runs and picked up one wicket it's been very controlled with his bowling very accurate Hit some good areas, well fielded. Oh, Brabbles a long way down. Michael Clark was the fielder, 204 for three of 34 overs. A few runs to Bravo nicely.
Yeah, they're leading up to one here. Blake Hussey, uh, the Australian captain, 109 uh, earlier on today in the Australian innings. Sensational 109 not out, 90 deliveries. 10 fours, three sixes, and at that stage they were all but shot, all but gone. Played it well in the end, but just seemed as though Brian Lara was in two minds, looking to duck and then deciding to play the pull of the hook shot. Yeah, a little smile indicates the indecision. Well, I think it's done him for lack of pace there. He's ducked it, thought, oh, and then he thought, hang on a minute, I've got to hit this. It's uh, not that easy, I don't think, to change your mind like that from, to a ball like that. He's not the slowest around. He's also not the sharpest, 81 mile per hour. I don't think it has really mattered on this pitch. It's stayed consistent throughout. That's the main thing. It has, it it has again, played a bit different to the other again. days, but it hasn't changed. Oh, that's gone all the way. It definitely has. On to the top of the side screen. He's in control, Brian Lara. Well, I tell you, there's none better, I don't think, than Brian Lara when he hits a straight drive. And he's absolutely smashed this. Watch this ball disappear back. It hits the clips the top of the side screen there. And that's a long way up. Didn't have a lot of elevation on it. He just Brian. hits the ball so sweetly. Didn't get to the pitch of the ball either. It had a little bit of turn on it. Quicker ball there, the dart from Cullen. <laughs> Not sure that that was a well played shot. Come on, DC. Well, Brian Lara's got those uh, determined eyes on me there. I, I can see under the helmet. Oh, you would have been dead. Brian Lara would have been gone had that hit the stumps. It was just a little collision between himself and Colin. Yes. I don't think the verbal, if there is any out there, I'm not sure that there is, but... Uh, I don't think the verbal but getting back to it really works on Brian Lara. I think it makes him more determined. I've seen over the years, I've seen McGlath, I've seen Warney. Well, there he is. How far down is he? Not really. He is forward, but it's hit. Wish on the pad, but it, the ball's got a fair way to travel, and Hawkeye says if it keeps going on the trajectory that it's on, it's up and over the top. Pretty good line, bud, wasn't it, when you look from the front? You can hear the cry of anguish from Watson. 38 overs gone, 2-2-2 two, two, two for three. The Aussies obviously want to make it happen. Right, Laura on strike. Is he going to go for him again? He's hit him for a beautiful straight six uh, last over. There's still a big gap in that area straight down the ground. Straight back over the bowler's head. Against uh, the old master, who was only 18 away from 100. He's already hit 1-6. Uh, yes, they've got to save the ones. They've uh, definitely got to do that. They've got to try and force them to uh, hit it over the top and make a mistake. Uh, one and a half overs left for Watson. Just an unforgettable night for seven overs, one for 20. And uh, he's got one more left here to make it nine overs. And now he's uh, one for 37. That's gone flying away down to third man for four. 
Well, there are no slips there. If you bowl just short outside off stump, uh, these two are going to cut you away for four. 241 for three. Oh, and that's hit him on the head. That's hit him on the crash helmet, I think. No, he's given him out. Well, that's a bit of a blow. Oh, I was sure that uh, hit the, the, the crash helmet, but it must have hit the back of the bat. A strange one. I think he's got through the shot here too early. Round the wicket, Lee banged it in. Yeah, it's off the back of the bat, where the stickers are. And straight to Hussey, and you could probably argue, geez, he's a bit unlucky, Brian Lara. Could have gone fine, could have gone a bit wider. He has to depart. Morning and uh, good day to viewers wherever you are. Good morning to Ian Smith. And uh, when Ian Smith says it's a better day in his New Zealand accent, um, you can take it that he means a better day as well because it is quite chilly. It isn't uh, 20 degrees yet and it's overcast, but we are starting on schedule. In fact, half an hour before schedule because of the time lost yesterday. Astel has to finish off the over. La Lara's in strike. Here's the first ball. Big appeal for a catch at the wicket, not out. Good take down the leg side by McCullum. Just brushing the thigh pad. So a little bit of excitement right away. And a little bit of movement too for Nathan Astle. New Zealand really didn't get the ball to do a lot yesterday, but that ball swung into Brian Lara. Well, that's beautifully weighted, wasn't it? There wasn't a lot of width in that or pace from Astle, but Lara found some... Exquisite placement there. So he's underway in the West Indies too. Well, the first ball he faced, a big appeal for a catch down the leg side by the keeper. But uh, umpire Howell had a couple of decisions to make yesterday, which were close. Oh, yes, mate. Yeah. Lara threaded it through just a single. Outfield will continue to be slow because of the well-grassed outfield. Here's the first ball of the day. Well, for me, this is just straight off the pad. That's well inside the line of that uh, thigh pad. You called it uh, certainly have had a very, very good time of it in this first uh, session in a bit. Yeah, they were sent in yesterday. It must have been little qualms in the dressing room with the conditions. Gale out for 30. Now Franklin to Lara. So Franklin will look for swing here. Picked up the wicket of Lara in Wellington with a slip catch. Interesting field set right away for Brian Lara. I'm very interested in this bloke uh, out here. He's very deep. Because yesterday Brian Lara played two expansive drives over the top of point. Man's been set further back. Yeah. Quinting, certainly in his early innings on this tour. No, no. no ball from Franklin. Hamish Marshall down at deep point. Lara went over that position yesterday for one of his boundaries, a, almost a one handed shot in the end. batting at number three for the first time since his unbeaten 400 in Antigua in 2004. I actually find that staggering, to be honest. Is it, has it ever been brought up before? Has it ever been questioned? That's that? Not really. He's, uh, he started, he's batted uh, 86 times in his career at number, number four, and I think something like 30-odd times at At uh, number number three. Can you remember Tony? I'm sure you will. What number he batted when he got 375? Number three. Oh, I thought you might. He's got uh, eight double centuries in tests. He's second only to Bradman. 
who got 12. Six of those batting at number four, but uh, as you say, the two biggest, number three, the world record breaking ones. And of course, it would have been his choice uh, to have batted three here, to have moved up from number four, where he failed in the first two test matches. End of Franklin's first over of the day, the second, 103 for one. The Franklin to Lara. Gee, played that late, Brian Lara, in pretty awkward fashion. He's obviously not happy with the, how he's picking it up. Just to look how awkward. This, this ball didn't do a lot, but just see how it really tucked him up and the bat skewed round in his hand. It's almost as if he didn't really see it comfortably until the very last second. He doesn't look relaxed. There's a kind of a grimace. He's definitely not picking it up. That confirms it. That would have been a whip through mid-wicket for four. With Lara at his best, he's now come down. He's having a few words with Ganga. He's just not happy this morning. That certainly was almost a gift. Here it is. gone through the offside for four there was a shot of catch it was uh, somewhat aerial but struck well enough to get him a boundary well he's played the shot out of instinct i think and a bit of frustration he finally sees one that he can latch onto he thinks but uh, he may have had a, just a mental block because he forgot that hamish marshall was stationed out there for just that the good thing was he got it 10 yards in front of square instead of dead on square Just be the, the, the weather which you've produced here in Hawks Bay. It's been grey and gloomy and overcast, uh, which of course we had been told by a certain well known resident of this area never happens. Always sun shining. Don't, don't blame this, just this little blip. Oh, nice. I'm pretty sure that Brian Lara scored runs in England at times. 187, 107 for one. Driven down the ground, not off the very middle of the bat. But they'll come back for a couple. Uh, James Franklin's sort of enjoying this. He's sort of enjoying the, the fact that Lara's giving him the odd opportunity. Darren Ganga won't enjoy that. It's swung. It held back in terms of pace, and Gango is completely and utterly done. It was perfectly weighted. Angling in, inside edge was exposed. It got past that, and Gango was all at sea. So Bond will feel a good deal happier about proceedings now. Lara just not playing with any sort of fluency. Gets that away, and it will carry all the way for four. Well, this is about the third one-handed shot for Brian Lara. Still watch what happens with the hands on the bat here. Left hand completely disappears off the handle. It suggests he wasn't really in control of it, but he was happy with the end result. Now that's Lara. Okay, it's a half volley, but it's a full flourish of the straight bat and the perfect off drive. 
everything is so still in this shot. That's the difference. The other stuff's been fidgety, but everything is perfectly still. The balance is perfect. He stands and just admires the shot after he makes impact, and it feels good off the blade. Gone up to 45 now, Lara. And that's flashed between the gullies. They said catch it, but even if it had come to one of the players in the gully, it would have been life-threatening. It was travelling. Right now, Stephen Fleming's quite happy that uh, his side has won the series because he's uh, thinking this might have been earlier on. Full flourish from Brian Lara. It uh, may be, have been a catching opportunity for the likes of Fulton, but it was pretty high as well as screaming along. So 49 all of a sudden. In the air again, and down to the boundary. And that's four consecutive fours for Lara. He's gone to his 50. Umpire will ask whether Marshall pulled it back before it got to the boundary. They've run to anyhow, so he's at 50. Have a look. Well, the key is, uh, I think that's OK. Actually, I think Hamish Marshall's done right. Was he contacting those uh, ropes there? Or did he free the ball before he made any contact? He's, uh, well, the question, did it hit his jersey as he flicked it back? That's also a valid point. I mean, it's a technical one, but... I've only given two, and that's that. Eventful over. Lara has... Uh... So we were waiting for you to join us. Undone by beauty from Shane Bond. So Morton has come out to join Brian Lara, who has uh, gone from 28 overnight very quickly through to 51 with some expansive stroke play through and over the offside. West Indies scoring rate is 3.85, which is quite exceptional for Test cricket. My goodness gracious. That really was a screamer. It's got Lara on his back. <laughs> you can laugh now. Right now, Brian Lara is thinking about your lovely beaches in Barbados and Trinidad. He's thinking, what am I doing here? That's an absolute screw.